Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of ISC High Performance 2023. We were covering all the things HPC, machine learning, AI, high performance analytics, quantum computing and more. And one of the most important topics in the HPC community is next generation cooling and energy efficiency. And we're joined here by David Hardy, Power Edge Cooling Product Manager at Dell, Tim Shedd, Engineering Technologies Office of the CTIO, and Mohan Kumar with an Intel Fellow. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, good to Thank be here. You. Thank you, thanks for having us. So the big topic is power and cooling, but how do you get more power with, to power all these CPUs, GPUs, processors to get the, the power that's needed and at the same time sustainable? We'll start, we'll start with Dell. Well, I'll start uh, as a product manager uh, for PowerEdge. You know, one of the biggest challenges is bringing uh, sufficient power into these systems really to support these high performance processors, both CPUs and GPUs. Um, luckily, it's more than worth it. Uh, the performance gains relative to in the increased power uh, make it a no brainer to go with the next generation systems. And the other piece of the equation is uh, from an efficiency perspective, uh, how do we cool it? Um, luckily, generationally, we keep improving how much we can air cool. We've got liquid cooling options that make everything run very efficiently. So again, um, it's more power consumption to deliver this high level of performance, but we can do it more efficiently this generation compared to past. What's the innovation behind this next generation? If you had to put, put the finger on it, what was, what's the key aspects? Well, actually uh, it's not just one thing. It's uh, a, a bunch of incremental improvements in a, a variety of areas, be it power delivery, be it the, uh, the designs of the system so that we can more efficiently move air through there. It's the way that we uh, bring cooling to the chips and smartly control fans so that we're only moving as much air as needed at any given time, reacting dynamically to a workload inside a system. It's a lot of refinement. It's continuous improvement uh, generation over generation that adds up to big differences uh, at the system level. Oh, and what are we talking about in terms of power uh, that we're going to be seeing that can maintain the cooling and also the sustainability requirements? There's a lot of green action going on, sustainability goals. Um, this is a big part of this new metric. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so the processor, as David mentioned, are, are, uh, no, uh, right now our processors consume on the high end about 350 watts and the GPUs can consume close to 1000 watts as we look into the future. And you need to have an efficient solution at all levels uh, to, to cool these solutions. And when we talk about cooling solutions, especially it's not about, can you cool with air or can you cool with liquid? It, the question is, can you cool economically and sustainably with any given solution? That's what you're looking for. And so this is where the right solution, uh, right solution for the right uh, problem, uh, right? So at some point, when you can, you can always come up with a cool air cooling solution, but the problem is the power of that cooling solution is going to, you know, put a dent on your pocketbook. And that's, that's the point where you cut over into technologies like liquid cooling, which would be cold plate or immersion cooling, various things. So we are always driven by what we call TCO, total cost of ownership, right? What is the optimal solution for your total cost of ownership? If it is air, it's air. Yeah. If it is uh, cold plate, it's cold plate. If it's immersion cooling, if it's immersion cooling, right? And you you have the spectrum covered, so we can hit all points. You know, as we go, as we increase the power of the platform, increase the efficiency of the platform, uh, we are able to do that. And one additional point here is that since you brought up sustainability, even if there was no power issue to dealt with, a lot of folks are looking at you know liquid cooling solutions simply because it's more sustainable, uh, because in general. Uh, liquids, like let's say, take water for an example, it's an order of magnitude more efficient, it's conducting heat away compared to air. So that gives you the efficiency that then translates to reduced power that contributes to uh, your sustainability value. How does the liquid cooling solutions today compare to previous generations? Uh, so, you know, liquid cooling has an interesting history that goes back to, I believe the first patent was somewhere in the 50s for cooling capacitors on, 
on on the street transformers, uh, right? That's the, uh, and then it moved from there to the supercomputers, which were in liquid nitrogen baths in 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 the good old days in in the seventies. And so we keep in technology. It's a very interesting phenomenon. We keep reinventing things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so it's it's not that. So the, the domain shifts over is basically what happens, right? So what used to be in the domain of capacitors moved over to supercomputers, now it's moving to mainstream servers. So yeah. what we are doing now is taking those principles that have worked effectively elsewhere, and we are applying the same thing to cooling chips and server platforms. Yeah, we hear a lot of people talking about direct liquid cooling compared to just other cooling solutions, especially in the racks. What's the, what's the advantages of the direct liquid cooling? Can you just put a, quantify that or give commentary? I'll jump in. Um, so uh, for the direct liquid cooling, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to match the heat load to the cooling system, right? So uh, that's, if you go back to engineering and thermodynamics, that's the best way to be efficient. You don't want to overpower uh, your cooling. If you don't need it, um, you want to match that well. So when you are placing a cold plate, which is just a little box, typically with a copper base, uh, and you're running water through that, you're you're putting that uh, really effective cooling right on the, the heat source. Um, everything else in the chassis can typically be cooled pretty efficiently with relatively low powered fans. And um, so you're able to significantly decrease the total energy required to cool while enabling um, what we see is enabling uh, chip powers, you know, well past a thousand watts. We don't see a real limitation right now uh, from the, the, the silicon vendors as far as the roadmap and, and being able to uh, use DLC to cool it. What's the role of the industry playing on standards? Is, is there a lock-in? Is it open? Can you guys share, it's been discussion around, you know, worried about lock-in from a particular cooling solution or provider. What role does the industry standards play in, in the cooling? Area. It seems super valuable, especially when you have racks succeeding more than some of the numbers you guys are quoting there when you have more GPUs and CPUs. Yeah, again, I'll, I'll, I'll offer this and, and just um, at this time, there's not a lot of standard um, that exists. It's it, every system tends to be kind of a one-off design from the chip to the, the facility water. Um, but there are efforts going on from the Open Compute Project uh, through um, in the United States, ASHRAE, the American Society of Heating and Refrigeration Air Conditioning Engineers to um, AHRI, which is the American Heating and Refrigeration Institute. Um, they're all involved now in developing liquid cooled equipment standards um, that will open up the ecosystem and make it a lot easier uh, for the components to be interchanged uh, the idea is to open up the, the ecosystem for innovation and for more uh, comp competition in the, in the ecosystem, which we anticipate will also make the technology more affordable. So um, we're migrating toward standards, but we're not there yet. It's definitely really important to be able to enable the type of scaling that we see is necessary uh, to support the, the computing innovations that are coming. So hitting, yeah. the, hitting the levels now, you can support the heat now. What are some of the reuse benefits? There's been discussions around uh, position to solve some of these challenges, lower the, the T cases. What are some of the most effective solutions out there? How do we do this efficiently? So I think you covered a, a couple of points there. Um, so let me talk about reuse first, right? So one of the reasons, especially <laughs> like immersion cooling is very interesting to folks is, uh, is, is because it allows you to have an outlet temperature that's much higher and you can utilize that outlet uh, water temperature that's much higher for, uh, today what we do is to essentially we, we, pay, we pay for you know, removing the heat and then we pay for rejecting the heat, right? You pay twice. So what they want to get to is that once that heat has been removed from the platform, you want to take that heat and use, make it do useful thing. Like you know, if you're in a building, maybe heat up the building. Uh, you know, or uh, in in mid latitudes in America, they're using it for greenhouse. Essentially, they're pumping the heat into a greenhouse where it's you know maybe you know th 30 or 40 Fahrenheit. So you can you can grow vegetables there. And uh, in other countries where they have heat water loops, 
that supply to the homes, they're using it essentially to supply heat, uh, hot water into the homes using the data center. So data center is essentially, instead of you know you paying to reject heat and causing an environmental impact in that, you're actually benefiting the society through the data center business, which is an amazing thing, uh, transformation to happen. And that's real efficiency. Talk about leverage there. I mean, that's benefit to society, green and turning it, turning it into societal benefits. What about the um, other challenges around um, effective solutions around um, higher TDPs and lower T cases? Uh, yeah, so one of the one of the benefits of going down this path is that we allow us to go for a higher TDP, a thermal design power. So, which means we can deliver higher performance. Uh, and uh, if, if we can deliver higher performance in this in a smaller footprint, then you need, you know, your overall overall uh, volumetric space in which you're delivering that performance basically goes down. So it's a lot more sustainable solution for you to for you to have, right? And then having more efficient cooling solution means you can go for a lower lower T case because you're able to, uh, you have the ability to reject that heat essentially. And that plays into essentially higher, once again, into higher performance that you can deliver to the customer. That's awesome. David, let's bring you in here. You're, you're the Power Edge cooling product manager. You got to make it all work with the with the products. Um, this yeah, is, this I, is I was going to say, I'm sitting here, <laughs> I'm sitting here with these technologists that they, they're, they're experts in this field. They, they I'm sure uh, have, excellent vision into the future on how the different technologies work and how they scale. I work with the customers today that are trying to take these great ideas, but how do they map back into some of the constraints that, that our customers face today when they may have had a data center built 20 years ago, you know? Uh, so it, we, we do work with our customers to make sure that um, transitions to take advantage of these latest liquid cooled solutions, and there are a variety of liquid cooled solutions. Um, you know, as a standard, we offer direct liquid cooling, but we also support immersion cooling and, and other solutions. Um, you can do it at the system level, you can do it at the rack level. There's a lot of ways to apply liquid cooling. And so we work with our customers to try to figure out what works best for their constraints, what works best for their budgets, what works best for their timelines. And we're really at the beginning right now of deploying processors that are stressing that air cooling threshold. So for a lot of customers, they're still air cooling. They're going to continue to leverage that equipment in their data center. And they see their, their next step is when they're going to have to start considering liquid cooling. Others are already there. They're, they're comfortable with it. It's running uh, well. It's accomplishing the goals uh, and they're developing a skill set and how to manage it. Uh, so uh, every customer runs at their own pace. And it's important that, you know, Dell and Intel, as we work with customers, uh, help our customers at the pace that's comfortable for them. Tim mentioned, and Mohit also had a comment on that other side. Tim mentioned the power per rack should go exceeding the numbers. Moen talked about the future of powering new use cases where there's benefits that come out of the heat reuse and water cooling. The customers have a lot of racks. They could have old racks. This is a performance per rack, power per rack that comes in. What's the innovation around the racks, whether they have to have old racks or new racks? How are people stacking up their data centers? Because you know we're seeing more and more data centers being deployed, not only for the hyperscalers, but for everybody. I mean, we've got edge coming around the corner. You're going to have a lot of footprint challenges with the uh, intelligent edge uh, coming. So this is a real going to be a power and cooling <laughs> challenge as you get more density. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, I would say very roughly, if you were to break this into helping customers who have existing data centers and they're used to working with certain rack footprints, power distribution schemes, uh, it, it looks like incremental improvements and, and we try to make the latest technologies digestible in bytes that, that work. Customers that are starting with a greenfield, oh, clean sheet of paper, um, there are a lot of opportunities to, to be creative to start with. Uh, starting with um, yeah, getting power distribution uh, oriented around density from the very beginning, high power, high voltage uh, power distribution um, tall racks, uh, you know, plumbing water into the data center for every rack position from the start so that you're future proof. Um, but again, it gets back to customers move at their own pace. We have to give them options. 
Yeah, one of the things I want to ask you on the product side, because Dell's well known for modularity, interchangeability, increased innovation every year, lower cost. I mean, come on, that's the Dell formula. Yeah. What's the benefits for the end customer on, on this area? Because this is a very important area. They got to get the more power and there's a sustainability targets they want to meet too. What are the key benefits to the customer? Well, I'll jump in. Um, in one of the innovations that we are uh, driving is in partnership with uh, members of the Open Compute Project, uh, we are actively supporting the DCMHS along with Intel. Um, that's a data center modular hardware systems. Uh, this is, you know, at its core, allowing that flexibility, allowing, uh, you know, OEMs like Dell to be able to incorporate the latest and greatest silicon uh, into a standard format that then slides into a rack with disaggregated power. Um, so that's where instead of you having PDUs uh, vertical PDUs in the rear of the rack. We now have power supplies in power shelves that are spread throughout the rack. And then we distribute DC power. This offers a lot of advantages, both in terms of uh, more space in the computer platforms for, for doing compute, but also in terms of efficiency and sustainability, because now we can have these optimized power supplies that are, are available to uh, provide power to everything in the rack. And so that also goes to the cooling is now we can have these manifolds in the back of the rack that, that the, the servers can just slide right into. All comes back to standards, of course, and be, the ability to be able to slide uh, compute nodes in and out easily. Um, but this provides a promise of modularity, um, affordability and interoperability uh, for the future. Now that's not a today's statement, but it's certainly uh, you know publicly known that we're working together with Intel and others to develop these sorts of modular and uh, efficient systems. And by the way, the Open Compute um, organization is a phenomenal group. We covered their inaugural event many years ago with theCUBE um, and just they've had a great track record. So congratulations, it's super important for the industry, this area of sustainability and network efficiency. Um, Mohan, I have a question for Intel. You got the Intel Dell relationship, uh, well-documented, successful over many, many years and generations. Question for you, what is Intel doing to increase the performance, being mindful of the cooling challenges around sustainability? And how are you working with OEMs such as Dell to create efficient cooling solutions for these new hyper-powered processors? Thank, thank you, John. Uh, so first of all, we have uh, offerings that kind of target uh, these markets. So we have a QSQ that's uh, targeted towards immersion. We have optimized heat sinks that target uh, liquid cooling based solutions. And we have, above all, we have this know what left behind uh, approach to Solving, uh, solving the performance problem. So we want to maximize the performance at the optimal uh, power footprint for you. So we are, you know, every generation we try to uh, make our processors more power efficient. We have built-in accelerators that give you, you know, 10 to 15 X uh, performance uh, improve, energy performance improvement uh, uh, for, for you compared to, uh, uh, compared to the alternative. And we have the right solution for the right problem, right? We have not just processors, we have GPUs uh, and AI solutions. So put it all together. Uh, we try to cover all the bases in there. As far as our uh, partnership with Intel, uh, a few of them were uh, talked about earlier, right? Uh, so we work with them closely directly uh, as, uh, as our OEM partner and also with them in these public forums like OCP and uh, Clean Grid and ISRA and so on, to make sure the right standards are in place for us to take advantage of uh, the uh, the liquid, liquid cooling, immersion cooling, sustainability efforts like uh, DCMHS uh, that uh, John referred to, uh, to uh, in here, right? So by we are. So we have an approach to essentially provide them the solutions. We partner with them closely when we go and because it, these type of solutions are not one person problems. These are uh, definitely we need the OEM partner. They need us and we need them. And so we work tightly together to give the customer a solution that they can uh, utilize as opposed to giving them ingredient pieces that they have to put together. Yeah, and the needle's been moved on, on the sustainability side. You guys are doing a great job. Power Edge, uh, great name. I'll always love that name. More power, saves power. Next generation, you got a great product there, David. And 
And thanks for coming on. Tim, I'll give you the final word since you're the engineering technology at the office of the CTIO, which stands for Chief Technology Innovation Office. What is going on there? What's your, what are you most excited about right now? As you look out, you got the standards bodies coming together. You got a real momentum accelerating into the efficiency and energy savings, sustainability is looking good. People are all on point, not just mailing it in. There's some real action. What are you most excited about? Yeah, that's actually really true, and that has been <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the most encouraging and, and exciting things um, that I've seen recently in Dell is as we are developing these new high performance platforms, uh, in, uh, employing the OCP, you know, RV3 racks and DCMHS, um, also up front, front and center is sustainability. How are we accounting for that? How are we best taking advantage of the power saving features that Intel is providing us. How are we taking advantage of the power saving features in these new power supplies in even network cards and so on. And uh, it's been really exciting to be a part of this and to see how we can enable uh, really the compute solutions of the future um, in a, a way that our consumers can really benefit from, our customers can really benefit from uh, while um, you know also being completely cutting edge uh, high powered and uh, sustainable. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. And we did a full interview without talking about AI. Um, so we can't leave it there. We have to bring it up as the <laughs> final question. Um, we did a survey to our CUBE alumni network, technical network of infrastructure, cloud and on-premise uh, friends. And we had about 50 people. We asked, are you using AI? Most of them said they're going in for low hanging fruit around helping around automation, cost optimization, uh, network optimization. And, and these low hanging fruit use cases. Just final question for each of you. Are you seeing AI coming in to help with some of the, some of the hard, heavy, undifferentiated heavy lifting in the area around getting more efficiency? I just thought I'd throw that out there as a lightning round. Anyone want to take a shot at that? I'll, I'll start with that simply because our, the focus for my team is to enable people to use AI more than the, how we're, we're applying it to our product planning today. Um, there's a, a lot of good new accelerator based solutions to uh, support customers in every industry to leverage AI and you know the, the efficiency factors and cooling these high power systems is uh, are my maniacal focus. <laughs> well, they, well, they eat the power, they want more power. GPUs, I mean, you can't get enough yeah. GPUs can't for training large multimodal models, foundation models. Yeah, so uh, on the AI, it's it's a twofold answer. I would agree that with David that you know our job is to enable these solutions that AI can play in, but we also see that AI has got a tremendous role to play where uh, as a platform and a server system, we have capabilities and then there are data center that has cooling and systems that are typically tend to operate independently. And there is a way now for an AI to come in and essentially say, Oh, I see how these systems are being cooled. And on the basis of this cooling, I can you know, change the temperatures, I can move the needles on the various things, and I can improve your performance, I can give you better, uh, better sustainability. So various knobs that it can turn and to that extent machine learning can be applied in those spaces. Okay. It's an exciting place to be. Yeah, it's exciting. Okay. Tim, man, take a shot at that. Any AI comments on your end? <laughs> you wanna... No, I, I'll support that. I would say, you know, if you've heard recent comments from our, our uh, you know, Chairman uh, Michael Dell, um, basically, if you're not using AI, you're you're leaving, you know, you're leaving ideas and performance on the table. And so, um, we are uh, we are aggressively supporting our customers in the space uh, while exploring how we can best use this. Um, to improve our products at potentially a faster pace um, and uh, provide the sorts of uh, efficiency gains and sustainability gains that Mohan just uh, outlined. Absolutely, We're, it's it's part of the game now. You guys are right, at, you're in the center of the action. You're on both sides, you're enabling more AI to be smarter, faster, cheaper. And at the same time, you can use it to make efficiency on the sustainability and energy side. So super, super cool. Yeah. Um, pun intended. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage of ISC High Performance 2023. We're covering all things HPC, machine learning, AI, high performance, analytics, and computing. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.